Yeah, usually when I'm like riding with my friends, uh, we're having a good time racing the trail. You can see what people like to ride, how they ride. People open up and uh, get a little loose. Uh, the camera usually busts out a few hero moments and you know, there's a bit of blood, but uh, you know, it's all part of the documentary process. In the rugged and raw terrain of North America's most easterly island, a little known adventure community is growing. From the renowned mountains and fjords of western Newfoundland to the dramatic rocky coastline that surrounds the capital city, there exists a world-class network of trails and a group of passionate people who both build them up and ride them down. Meet the pioneers that started it all, the enthusiasts who are driving growth, and those who are breaking new ground. <laughs> I'm stoked okay. about it. So join me as I try to get up to speed on mountain biking's hidden gem, right here in my home province. We're on the western side of the island, meeting up with Drew Kennedy and a few of his riding buddies. Drew is a professional photographer with a passion for mountain biking. He's gonna show us what a typical day is like capturing photos up on the trails. I've been a fan of Drew's work for a while now, so I'm excited to see what his process is, all while checking out some of the best trails the west coast has to offer. It was a gorgeous late summer's morning to make some new friends on this side of the island. We made our way to the top of Goldmine, a must ride trail that I've been eager to ride. As expected, the West Coast scenery did not disappoint. Nothing beats a group ride. We had a full crew joining us on the trails. Four of Drew's buddies that included Joey, Noah, Patey, and Tyler. So Drew, you've successfully made a career from photography. Tell us how it all started. Started like when I was 14, 15 years old. I went up to Staples, bought a camera to photograph me and my friends snowboarding and skateboarding, and it just kind of exploded from there. What advice would you give to 20-year-old Drew Kennedy who just got started as a photographer? Oh man, uh, I would say, you know, stop sleeping in. I feel like there was a few adventures that I missed out on because I was too focused on others. And, uh, and in hindsight, Shooting more would have gave me better experiences for futures. It didn't take long to notice the difference between the trails here on the West Coast versus the East Coast trails that I'm so accustomed to. On the rugged East Coast, the trails are rocky, rooty, and technical from top to bottom. But out here on the West, you can find your flow on the hard packed dirt. So Drew, the photos you shoot on the trails effectively capture not only the enjoyment of riding, but the scenery around us. Can you talk a little bit about your process when you're up here capturing mountain biking and what sort of things you're looking for on the trail? Yeah, usually when I'm like riding with my friends, uh, we're having a good time racing the trail. You can see what people like to ride, how they ride. People open up and uh, get a little loose. So when I plan a shoot day, it's always nice to bring those people back and ask them where they want to shoot. You know, there might be a turn or a jump that they're pretty stoked on. We're gonna do it one at a time, I guess. Okay. Noah first, Joey, and then Patey. <laughs> These first snaps that Drew took are so sick, and the boys look like absolute pros on camera. Every time I'm in front of the camera, I look like a certified dingus. My posture's weird and I look awkward. If Drew's gonna be snapping my photo, I need to get it right. So when I'm on camera and being photographed, what sort of tips do you have for me so that I can show better in the photos and not look you know, tense and silly on camera? If you're comfortable riding, and then usually when people put on a camera, they usually go faster or try to ride harder or show off a little more. That'll put you out of your comfort zone and that'll show in your body language. So it's always nicer to like dial it back a little bit, be a bit more conservative, 
and ride comfortably than it is to charge for the camera. You know, that's how people get hurt. Liam, are you next? Sure. All right, dude, slow it down. Let's do it. Dropping in. You. Let's go. Putting my ego in my pocket and slowing it down, like Drew said, really helped. I look like I'm hitting the trail with confidence. I think this photo actually turned out pretty well. So it's not just about hitting the biggest berm or the biggest drop or biggest jump. You're you're looking for other things on the trail as well. Yeah, totally. You know, it could be it could be a route, it could be a smooth trail. As long as people are having fun, um, that will showcase in their body language. It's always nice to try to squeeze in the landscape if you can. I always try to do like the little people, big view, because you know we live in such a beautiful area, the country, and I always try to showcase that wherever I can. So you've been shooting mountain biking for a couple years now. Has your process changed? Are there any big lessons you've learned? Yeah, lessons for sure. Every day is a lesson. It's always nice to pack more than what you need. I always take a spare lens, spare memory cards, spare batteries. You never know what's gonna happen on the trail. The most important thing is the first aid kit. Uh, the camera usually busts out a few hero moments and you know there's a bit of blood, but uh, you know it's all part of the documentary process. Are you guys ready up there? All right, Drew, so you got your camera. Me and the boys are gonna drop in. You're gonna grab a few stills. Uh, what sort of frame you got eyed up here today? This next frame's a new one. I've never shot it before. Um, we're gonna have the riders in the foreground, a slower shutter to give a bit of motion blur, uh, and then the big wide view of the valley and the other side of the Humber Valley there with those rock faces. All right, awesome, so we drop in. You ready? I'm ready to go, let's do it. All right, guys, we're gonna do one at a time. Tyler. Nick. It's inspiring to see the name Drew has made for himself and witness his creative process firsthand. I had to ask Drew, how does he stand out from the crowd? I'd like to think just being organic and photographing, you know, those genuine moments, having fun, um, making it look as good as I possibly could, and trying to stand out a little differently than most people. I find a lot of people can get like kind of caught up in, in Instagram filters. When you shoot and develop, it's nice to stay as true to the scene. So Drew, having the exposure that you do, do you feel like you have a responsibility to represent the mountain biking community here in Newfoundland? Absolutely. Uh, people see only so much on social media, so it's nice when they meet you in person that you can kind of bring the other half to the table. All right, guys, we're ready to go whenever you are. Just give me about 10 seconds in between riders while you're dropping. That's awesome, let's move on. So Drew, I've only ridden on the West Coast a couple times. Can you tell me more about what you see happening in the community here? In the last few years, the trail network has grown big time. More and more people are digging. Uh, we have the West Coast Cycling Association now and you can buy trail pass. They're planning more trails. Last year, more people got outside and started enjoying the trail network. So I feel like in the next few years, it's gonna keep growing and growing and it's 
going to be really exciting to see where it goes. Besides buying a trail pass, what can individual riders like myself do to contribute to the community? The most important one is show up trail nights. Money can only go so far. We need hands doing, doing work, digging dirt, moving rocks. Your local bike shop will have all the information about trails and, and, and build nights for sure. Liam, appreciate your time, ma'am. Enough this talk and let's go ride Trapper's Line. Let's do it. I appreciate Drew and the lads taking the day to show me around the incredible trails on this side of the island. Watching and learning how Drew creates stunning imagery that perfectly captures the sport of mountain biking was worth the trip in itself. This won't be my last time coming to the west coast to ride these trails, and I encourage anyone who hasn't ridden them to pack up your bike and make the trip. You just gotta go out there and ride sometimes for the sake of getting out and riding and enjoying it. The real time to push yourself and compare yourself is race day, and so I think that's where it really comes out and shows. I never had much experience on, on jumps before. Rolling down way too fast at the start. That was the moment where I knew things weren't gonna go so well for me.